We also consume too much milk. And the availability of dairy products continues to grow. But do these products actually agree with us? After all, nearly 75% of the world's population and 20% of Europeans are lactose intolerant. In other words, unable to properly digest dairy products. Dairy products contain no complex carbohydrates or roughage and very few vitamins. Instead, they are full of saturated fat, cholesterol and animal protein. When we're young and growing up, everybody wants to try to feed people dairy products and make sure you have milk every day, but the science really now is at a point where that cannot be sustained. There is ample evidence from wonderful investigators like T. Colin Campbell, who clearly showed that casein, which is the major protein in milk, is really one of the strongest promoters of cancer. T. Colin Campbell is a world-renowned nutritional scientist. In a series of experiments, he was able to prove that animal proteins, casein in particular, promote all stages of cancer growth. In experiments, rats were given carcinogenic substances. Afterwards, half were fed a 5% casein-enriched diet and the other half, 20%. 20% roughly corresponds to the amount consumed in Western diets. With a 5% casein-enriched diet, the animals did not develop cancer. With a 20% casein-enriched diet, however, cancer growth was stimulated significantly. Professor Campbell went a step further Every three weeks, he altered the rat's diet. So the next thing we did, we did some studies to start out with animals here, and then let the cancer start to grow with 20% casein, and then we switched it to 5% and it went off. We gave the 20% back again, came back again. We put it on 5%, it came off. So we could turn on and turn off cancer development just by switching the amount of casein being consumed. These findings are also supported by evidence with humans. We also know that all the saturated fat and the casein in dairy helps to accelerate and promote heart disease. And then we have this whole problem of fractures in the elderly. So here we have this problem of increasing cancer, increasing heart disease, and increasing fracture. Not a good thing. Dairy really should be, uh, should be out. Es wird sehr viel darüber diskutiert, dass wir ohne Milch nicht genügend Kalzium aufnehmen. Kalzium ist wichtig für die Knochenstabilität, soll Osteoporose vorbeugen. Aber äh, Untersuchungen von Menschen, die überhaupt keine Milch und keine Milchprodukte verzehren, zeigen, dass dort die Osteoporose Häufigkeit sehr viel geringer ist als bei uns. And dairy also has um, and there's good evidence for this it has some uh, allergenic properties. It tends to be associated with allergies. Either directly associated or enhancing the allergies coming from another source. And so we see things like in the case of teenage boys we get this acne, they get this acne sometimes, the skin problem. A lot of that is due to their consumption of dairy. Stop dairy goes away. Dairy is associated with uh, migraine headaches. I know of a lot of people, you know, have these migraine headaches. It's kind of an allergy kind of thing. As is acne, it's kind of an allergy kind of thing. You stop that, it goes away. And it's very fast. Then I used to say that with great reluctance because I was raised on a dairy farm. I grew up milking cows. And then when I went away to do my doctoral dissertation, I actually did my dissertation on the idea of promoting more milk consumption. So I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying these rather negative things about dairy for any ideological reasons or any personal reasons. 
I'm saying it in reference to the evidence, the data. That's what it shows.